So what's going on, man? <sighs> Thursday's over. That's what's up. Yeah. Destination Friday. <laughs> Week's flying by for me in a slow week. Yeah. Yeah, I will give it that. But I've had a ton of work, so. Yeah. Uh, me too. Are... Gone before I know it. What's that? My days are gone before I uh, uh, know it. Yes. They're good days. Yeah. They are good days. Because they get us here to another episode of The Commute. For I will be your driver. I will be your passenger. All right, you are familiar with Kegel exercises that they ask women to do after they give birth or as they get older. You ever hear that? No. Another exercise after women give birth, doctors recommend they start these Kegel exercises to strengthen their pelvic floor. If left weakened, the ladies can get urinary leakage, organ prolapse, even decrease in sex drive. Uh, they give them these exercises, do you got like a lot of clenching and stuff like that. And uh, they're repetitive and boring, and they say a lot of women don't do them. So how do you make it exciting and make women want to do these exercises? Turn it into a video game. <laughs> uh, it's called the Skia, S-K-E-A, and it's currently under development by LinkCube Studio in China. How it will work is you will purchase a controller that can be linked to your smart device via Bluetooth, and then download the game app known as Alice in Continent. And uh, it's got a little, I'll show you what it looks like right there. It looks like a little vibrator type thing. Mm -hmm. You stick it in and, and you play the game. The game is similar to Temple Run. The game has players running down a path filled with twists and turns, avoiding and jumping over obstacles. Rather than tapping on the screen to let your character jump, you will squeeze your pelvic floor muscles to perform the action. Uh, it, he said it fits in just like a tampon. While controlling and flexing these muscles, how do you know you're doing it correctly? The ski will give you a soothing tickle to let you know that you're exercising the right muscles. That's fantastic, dude. That's a video game for your vagina. You know? Right. I never saw a dick video game. That would be fantastic. No, they don't have anything like that. You know, other than just tapping on your phone with your cock. <laughs> you know? I don't, I don't do that. No. That's not what broke it. <laughs> <laughs> While LinkCube is raising funds via Kickstarter, looking for ideas and suggestions to make Skia more fun and interactive, such as allowing you to compare your score with friends and planning your training progress with loved ones. I can't imagine there's going to be a whole group of friends that have this thing, unless no. they're at the, uh, you know, like a Kegel group. Therapy thing. Yeah, you know. I got something for you ladies. Uh, it's, 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 these kind of products don't make any sense to me. Who the fuck? That's going to raise money, but we can't. Yeah. Oh, boy. Let's see here. Well, all right. What is with all the yellow shirt fucking parking authority people? They must be ticketing hard, man. There's like 10,000 of them here. I'll tell you what they're not saying. Crackheads vomiting on benches. Fuck the bench. That's why I was on the steps. The bench I usually sit on the way for you. Uh -huh. Just covered in vomit. Oh my god. It's just, just, just crackhead vomit. And, and we knew it wasn't, uh, we knew it was crackhead vomit because there was no food in it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I almost wanted to put it in a pipe and smoke it for the residue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just, yeah, but yeah, they're all over here oh. making sure everyone's not staying in the space for more than two hours. Right. Chalking your tire. Uh, seriously, I think I saw like 25 or 30 parking That's where they people meet. down that block. That is where they meet. Uh, all right, a group of California medical marijuana patients have filed a lawsuit involving air pollution and it has nothing to do with smoking marijuana. The, well, I'll tell you what it does have to do with potheads being lazier than ever. I mean, they get a bad rap for being lazy. Uh -huh. You know, the old joke like, oh, I forgot to vote, uh, whatever. This tops it. The Union of Medical Marijuana Patients has filed a suit about the way the city of San Diego has authorized medical marijuana co ops in the city by restricting the businesses in certain areas. 
The current setup allegedly does not comply with the California Environmental Quality Act. According to the suit, which names the Coastal Commission and the City of San Diego, the way the co-ops are zoned will cause patients to drive to get their medications, causing uh, pollution and traffic. They're not concerned with pollution or traffic, and I'm all for smoking pot and getting high as a kite. But like, oh, now I have to drive. I have to go somewhere to get my legal marijuana. You know, like, come on, man. You're just gonna fuck it up for everybody. Nah, it's just a bent to get it more legalized than it is. It says, uh, they also allege that some patients will now be forced to grow their own marijuana indoors. A tactic that will waste energy and contribute to global warming. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna break the law now. You're saying, I'm, I'm gonna have to break the law. You're forcing my hand. It just... <sighs> just blows my mind you're not helping the stereotype well it's just that's how people massage laws into oh, what yeah. they want them you know yeah. but the thing is usually it's other groups that can like it'll help you get your way mm -hmm. i don't think they're gonna be like oh those poor potheads right you know what i mean yeah. it's gonna be like whatever and don't get your medical marijuana how's that mm -hmm. either drive to get it or not hey ride a bike <laughs> you know it's walk too far away you know, if they want to help make it legal, they should be like, no, no, I love smoking a joint and going out for a long walk. It helps me get exercise and helps me live longer. Mm -hmm. You should make it legal because people love taking long walks when they're high. <laughs> you don't got to prove it. You don't got to smoke a joint yeah. and run for five miles. Oh, I'm going to go do 5K. Let me just smoke a joint. The pot marathon. <laughs> pot a thon. That'd be a good skit. You know? Get the fuck out of my way. I would love to do research for it. Uh, the ordinance caps the total number of co-ops at 36 and places a limit of four per council district. The lawsuit, the lawsuit is seeking to have the ordinance taken off the books until the defendants can come up with a new plan that complies with the California Environmental Quality Act. So they're saying there's, there's, it doesn't meet the, the requirement right now? Yeah, because they're, the, saying they're saying what you want, there's a requirement set, and what you want doesn't meet requirements, so we're throwing this out until you come up with a better plan. Right. They're okay. like, we're not against yeah, it, yeah. Just, just come up with a better plan, yeah. and we'll work with you. Mm -hmm. But the law is the law, we're not going to try to change these laws, you know, so that you can walk across the street yeah. and get it. I get it, there's certain areas you don't want those things at, you know? Maybe they're not allowed to be near schools. Yeah. Think about how like crazy like zoning and stuff has to be now. Oh my like, god. You can't have like halfway houses with like sex offenders within you know a hundred mm -hmm. yards of a school and you know they you know or a park and then that was that was a whole thing on that um there was the one uh, Louis Thoreau documentary, the LA Stories one, he did one on like sex offenders and he went around to all the different like houses and there were like these halfway houses that uh, people in the community kept trying to get shut down that were like that had these sex offenders in it and what they were what this one group was trying to do was to open a mini park within like you know that that limit so the, the halfway house thing would be in violation. Oh, I remember you saying that, yeah. The area. Yeah. So... And you're just going to cause, you know, to uproot all of them. Uh, Make another building. I mean, I get it, but... Yeah, but, you know, there's only so much not in my backyard. Mm -hmm. You just plant parks in every so many miles of the state. And yeah. They won't be allowed anywhere. Uh, so with that, I came across another story that ranks marijuana usage by state. Uh, the map was a percentage of Americans over the age of 12 who have smoked pot in the last month, broken down by state. Uh, while some general trends aren't surprising, the Northeast and West Coast smoke a bit more, along with Colorado. There are some standouts, in particular Rhode Island blew everyone out of the water with 13% of all Rhode Island people. Uh, over the age of 12 have lit up in the last month and astounding 30% of all 12 to 25 year olds. It's hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Rhode Island was number one overall. 
except for 25 and over. They weren't number one. They were number one for total 12 to 17 year olds and 18 to 25 year olds. So our great state of Delaware, they, uh, in total, 12 years old and over, uh, that have smoked in the last month. Give me a guess, what do you think it is? Total number? Mm -hmm. Total percent. Oh, percent. Of 12 year old and up. Fucking damn it. It's gotta be someone way up there. Yeah, it's it these fucking party. assholes cutting in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this you. This guy. Go ahead, cunt. 8%. Fuck, dude. 7.5%. Not bad. Not bad. Thinking on the fly, slamming the brakes. Look at you. You cleared the mind. Gets, gets the blood pumping. <laughs> yeah, 7.5% total. Uh, 12 to 17 year olds was 9.5%. And 18 to 25 year olds was 21%. In the state of Delaware. And then 25 and over dropped significantly down to 5%. Whoa. Look, look. Look at this. Going through the media. Look, I gotta get there somehow. Nailed it. This is not a, this is not a cop in sight. Yeah, right? Had I done that, cop been right here. <laughs> so, yeah, so it seemed like, you know, it, in every state, it, the highest percentage was 18 to 25. Obviously, college, you know, whatever. Ooh, what good. do you do? Couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. PA driver. Uh, All, right. All right, let's see what happened this day a long time ago. August 7th, 1947. The Contiki. Okay, the Contiki. What is that? Oh, Captain. Oh, the Con Okay, I'm thinking it's a people. Right. I'm like Contiki. The Contiki Captain. By no oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Thor Thor Herdal <laughs> nailed it. Completes a 4,300 mile, 101 day journey from Peru to <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> to Ray Roya. Am I even? Do you know if I'm pronouncing any of this right? That's yeah, it's right close. Right? Okay, it's got a uh, it's near Tahiti. Got yeah. that. Uh, to prove that prehistoric South Americans could have colonized the Polynesian islands. It was a five-person crew, 40-foot square raft made of balsa wood. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. The raft is housed in the Contiki Museum in Oslo, Norway. Wow. That's pretty cool once you get through the... Uh, <laughs> the Norwegian names and the... Uh... Yeah, the pronunciation of the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... Wow, so they went on a 40-foot square raft mm -hmm. for 101 days? Yeah. And they all survived it? Yeah. Wow, 4,300 miles? Holy fuck. On a raft. <laughs> From In 1947, Peru. there's no way to contact anybody. No. You no. just gotta hope these people, you know, day to day, look and see, see anybody. No. Yeah. Wow. And but none of his, uh, like, I don't think they ever proved any of his theories were correct. Like that they actually oh, yeah? prehistoric migration happened that way. Just because he did it doesn't mean yeah, that's how that it happened. That, that's how it happened, but it proved that it could have happened. That's like a six and a half by six and a half foot raft, right? Or maybe it was 40 foot square. 40 foot square? 40 by 40. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I'm thinking 40 square feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 40 by 40. Still making it that journey. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. August 7th, 1782. George Washington creates the badge for military merit. Purple heart shaped piece of silk edged with a narrow binding of silver. The purple heart. The badge presented for any singularly meritorious action permitted the wearer to pass guards and sentinels without question. Really? And 
the honoree's name was inscribed in the Book of Merit. Do you still get, does it still like give you life? No, it's, I'm the it's, shit? Yeah, it's way changed. Oh, it's, okay. It's not like the same metal anymore. So awarded to three soldiers during the Revolutionary War, Elijah Churchill, William Brown, and Daniel Bissell, Jr. The Book of Merit was lost and the award forgotten about until 1927. Does it say when it was lost? No, no, it was just lost over time. I mean, still, that's crazy. It sucks for the people that were in it. Yeah. yeah. General Charles P. Summerall was unsuccessfully getting the award reinstated, unsuccessful <clears throat> getting the award reinstated, but Douglas MacArthur took up the cause and had the Order of the Purple Heart brought back for George Washington's 200th birthday, February 22nd, 1932. Purple Heart now displays a bust of Washington and his coat of arms. Huh. That's pretty cool. So what's like, uh, you get it now and it's just like there, have at it. No benefits to it. Uh, no, it didn't list whatever uh, the benefits are, so I don't know exactly. But you like don't have to wait in line at Subway <laughs> or something. You should come with something like that, it should. you know? It should have some kind of, you know, coupon. I would do that if I was a business. Purple Heart, let us know. Mm -hmm. You're the shit. No waiting for you, sir. Movie theater sold out. We're kicking two motherfuckers out. <laughs> you and your date have a seat. Yep. Something like that. Some kind of privilege. Any anyone wearing a anti-American shirt or button, you're out. We got a purple heart here. Thank you. Yeah, that car's smoking all up. Yeah, it's just pouring out smoke on the highway. Those potheads in California wouldn't like that. No, they couldn't drive that to their dispensary. <laughs> It looks like a new car, too. It does, man. I could have sworn he, was, he flew past us earlier. August 7, 1959, the U.S. Satellite Explorer 6 transmitted a crude picture of the Earth received in Hawaii. Yeah, that's a motor. Mercedes. And it was a Mercedes. Yeah, not for much longer. Ikea runs better than that thing now. <laughs> Smoke away. Something's burning off. Uh, received in Hawaii, the photo took 40 minutes to transmit. Wow. 1959. So was that the first picture of the Earth sent down? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's pretty wild. So before then, they just really didn't... No, there wasn't any like, like external pictures of it. Huh. No Pangea theory going on till then. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Flat earthers. <laughs> okay, so now we went from uh, marijuana ranks. We got school ranks here. I thought it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Went along kind of with the with the ranks. It uh, so the ranking from personal finance site Wallet Hub outlines the best and worst states for kindergarten through twelfth grade education, given the connection between one's education and future earning potential. The ranking was based on 12 factors, including student dropout rate, pupil to teacher ratio, test scores, rates of bullying, and school safety measures, as well as uh, how much money the states put into the schools. Hmm. So, give me a couple guesses for your, what you think was number one. Number one, um, school spending, it's hard to say. Those it's a lot to take I'd in. Say I'd say probably New York, Pennsylvania, something like that. Somewhere in the Northeast, I would think. Northeast? All right. And how about worst school? I don't know. The way you're phrasing it, it's going to be completely the opposite. So I'd say, I don't know, Idaho or something. Okay. Well, the number one school out of every... 50 state, actually 51, because District of Columbia was mm -hmm. is a separate entity. Number one school was New Jersey. Hmm. Shocked the shit out of me, dude. Hmm. New Jersey? They do have a lot of private schools. They, they dump, they're number three for dumping money into their schools mm -hmm. in the state, which again surprised me. Yeah, it's hard to say like how budgeting, it would have to be, it'd have to be a, you know, a state that has some kind of sales tax, I would think. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they have a high sales tax. Yeah. Uh, but like dropout rate, 
I wouldn't have thought they would have been high. Um, the thing is, Jersey has a lot of private schools. Yeah. So that, that kind of helped them out. Uh, number one in spending was Vermont. They were number three overall. Mm -hmm. They, uh, the other states from one to five is New Jersey, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, then Kansas. So Northeast, you had that, you were on the right track. Uh, the worst schools, uh, starting at 51, was the District of Columbia. Mm. Uh, followed by Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, then Nevada. Mm. A lot of your southern states, a lot of money, poor states. So really the whole thing kind of goes down to money. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it seems like. I mean, money makes everything better. That seems to be, except for Nevada, I mean, there should be tons of money there. Yeah. Yeah, you would think. Tons of tourism. For the amount of people that are there. Yeah. You know? Just shows you what, you know, those giant casinos and stuff give back. Yeah, Nothing. Exactly. Uh, and that's why I like to, you say you, you like to vote for a lot of uh, third party, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people when they're running for any kind of office. I remember voting for this guy and his deal, because we have casinos here in Delaware. His thing was he wanted to make 25% of all their profits go to the schools in the state. You take 25% of a casino's, casino's profits, yeah. and since then we've had sports gambling added, you know, a bunch of other stuff. We'd have the best schools in the friggin' world, man. No, but then there's, all those casinos would shut down. Because, I mean, we just gave them, like, what, $2 million or something to keep those the casinos open? Really? Yeah. That bad? Yeah, we subsidize the, Why? the casinos to keep them open. How are they not making money? It's a fucking casino. I'm just telling you. I mean, the odds go. I mean, I believe you, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. But it just seems like how can you fucking fail unless you're the worst businessman ever? We gave them all kinds of money to open up, and we subsidize them still. See, the problem with that is there's all these fucking loopholes mm -hmm. because yeah, they know it brings people to the state, so they're going to keep them open. But um, I saw a thing before with Donald Trump. He was broke by no means. But he's filed bankruptcy a number of times. Sure. You know, and you can only own so many casinos at one time. Mm -hmm. So when he wants to open a new, better one, he bankrupts one. You know, he knows a legal way to bankrupt it. Mm -hmm. Shuts it down. Claims bankruptcy. He claims bankruptcy. Then he has all this money to build a new one. Same thing with these fucking malls. Christiana Mall. It just passed. One of the biggest malls on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. They uh, got this huge-ass loan to... Uh, build the mall to expand it. Mm -hmm. They got the loan, build it, claim bankruptcy. They spent so much money on building it, but they get to keep it open now and make all the money and they don't have to pay the fucking loan back. Right. It's bullshit. So... It's not like any, you know, we can do that. Yeah, right? You claim bankruptcy, they're going to have you paying, you know, garnish your wages forever and mm -hmm. take your cars and do whatever to make your life a living hell. Yeah. And it's, it's harder now, even, to do that. Yeah, it's harder yeah they people. just, like, closed a bunch of that stuff. Right? Yeah. Uh, Delaware, overall, ranked 34 out of 51. Hmm. Uh, they were, however, 11th in spending out of 51. Yeah. So they dump a lot of money in, but... Not a lot of results. Don't have a lot of results in it. And uh, they didn't say why. You well, know, what the reasoning for that was. The other, I mean, the other thing too is there, there isn't a real strong correlation between money spent per student and what you get out of that. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's not <clears throat> real good evidence that that actually makes a difference. The more money you throw, in. right? Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. So some were high, and it was rel relative to what they spent. Yeah. Some like this just, just weren't. Um, overall, Delaware got an average score, they said, though, because uh, there is a mix. Like, I know where we live, the schools there, at least the younger grade schools, get a 9 out of 10 ranking from the state. Mm -hmm. And then as they go up, they go down. The high schools are ranked, like, 2 right. out of 10. Uh, but they're hoping that they'll take the model that the elementary schools used and mm -hmm. put them in place. I hope so. Yeah, because, well, I mean, you figure with the high schools, too, there's probably more uh, competition between those and um, private high schools. Right, right. At that point, because I would think there's more private high schools than there are private grade schools, but True. I don't know. That yeah, makes sense. Whether it's right, I don't know, but it yeah, makes I sense. 
Okay, so I got here, um, choo -choo 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 -choo, what's the name of this place? Sobelman's Bar uh, in Milwaukee. They had a uh, Bloody Mary drink that they would top with a bacon cheeseburger. A bacon cheeseburger slider. Mm -hmm. I like that was their gimmick, you know, to get people in. Well, that was not enough for them. After gaining some notoriety for their burger top drink, the Bloody Masterpiece, Sobelman's has decided to raise the beverage bar once again. The establishment has introduced a new drink, Chicken Fried Bloody Beast, that features all the same garnishes, cheese, sausage, pickles, olives, onions, mushrooms, asparagus, scallions, shrimp, lemon, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, and celery as the masterpiece. And then they top it off with an entire fried chicken. <laughs> you should have seen this thing. I wish I had a picture of it. It's a Bloody Mary, like in this like thin glass or whatever. It's got all this stuff sticking out of it. And no lie, an entire whole fried chicken just sit on top of the... I don't know how the glass could take the weight. Shit. It was like, what was that? I don't know. Someone fucking made me duck. <laughs> Fried chicken? <laughs> and an entire fried chicken right on the road. It felt like a fried chicken. Uh, that is but like, the strangest thing. I mean, that's something you gotta order with a group of people. You know, take the fried chicken, you can all pick up the fried chicken, yeah. and then have your drinks. But, uh. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Like, are you supposed to eat it on the glass and then drink the drink? <laughs> or. Let all the grease get in and absorb yeah, it in your bloody mouth? Is that Mary? part of it? I don't. And that's just weird because the Bloody Mary isn't really something I want to drink around dinner time. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's more like thing. a brunch drink. Right. You know? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'll see if that's I can post strange. a picture of it on our, on our yeah. Facebook page. Yeah, you should. That's the Chicken on. Fried Bloody Beast. It's going to describe us by the time we make it home. Yeah, Fuck, really. Man. Get out of this traffic, man. It opens assholes. up for a minute and then people just slam the brakes. Alright, uh, <laughs> last story. <laughs> a Brazilian woman who had been abandoned at birth went on a radio show to be reunited with her mother. Desperate to be reunited with her mom, Adriana sought the help of a local news show at Radio Globo's <laughs> yeah, I knew this The one. Time Is Now. Did you hear this one? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Which regularly helps people track down lost relatives. They found her mom, but at the end of the show, uh, Maria, the mother, says, I have another surprise for you. Adrienne had a brother. She explains she had also had a boy she gave up named Leandro. Not a common name. So she says, uh, that's funny. My husband's name is Leandro. Turned out, her brother was her husband. Uh, she is 39, Leandro is 37. Uh, they say that when Adriana found this out, she started crying uncontrollably. She said, I can't believe you're telling me this, that he's my husband. Now I'm scared to go home and find out that he doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. Well, I don't understand why they didn't have some kind of test before they got married, are you? You don't take a DNA test to get married. I thought you took like a blood test or something. Like some kind of... Before, back in the day, you used to take a blood test. Yeah. And that was just to make sure you didn't have any uh, STDs. Okay. But it's no... Yeah, it's no DNA test. DNA. And anymore, and I don't know about... You got married in Delaware? Yeah. Okay, I got married in PA. Now, when we got married in 2001, that was no longer something you had to have done. Like, we didn't have to take a blood test at all. Right. We, we had to... <laughs> We had to stand in front of a woman, she would ask us questions, and we had to answer yes or no to her. And uh, one of the questions was, are you related in right. any sort of way? And if you say yes, I don't think they give you the thing. But I mean, they were answering it truthfully to the best of their knowledge, sure, I'm sure, yeah. if they were asked that question. Yeah, it's not a thing. It says, the married siblings met for the first time 10 years ago, when after recovering from a failed previous marriage, Adriana moved back to the hometown where she and Leandro had been born. They immediately fell in love and had a child together who was now six. And, uh, I mean, damn, you talk about you're supposed to be in each other's lives. <laughs> That's one way or another. They said, at first, we were really knocked by it all. Uh, but we had a family meeting and told everyone that we were going to stay husband and wife, whatever anyone might think. We have so many plans together, nothing's going to break us up. Nothing at all. Uh... What would you do in that situation? You're happily married for 10 years, you have a kid. Like right now. Yeah. Let's say you found out your wife was your sister. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Are you 
a lot of with all your yeah, heart. I mean, I don't know how that would. That can't make you not love someone. Yeah. It's it would all be in your head. You know? Yeah. If you got a kid that's so, healthy, I mean. And you don't want to fuck up the kid. I mean, I mean, divorce can fuck up a kid anyway. Uh, well, except for it being broadcast. Well, yeah. Now this is my daddy uncle. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you try to kill the story as quick as you can and hope the kid never finds out. Or do you tell the kid? Yeah. Maybe not now, but say the kid's 15, 16, you tell them? <coughs> when, when do you do more damage? Yeah. You know? I don't know. Because really, I mean, the whole thing that is icky about it is the sex. Yeah. Well, a teenager's going to relate that. Mm -hmm. Six-year-old may not. Yeah. Look, we found out a long time ago. Grandmother hated me. Whatever. Um, so, so you decide we're going to stay together. Okay. You got to get past that sex point. Right? Do, yeah, do you hop yeah. right back in the sack? Like, fuck it, let's just get this over with? Yeah. Or do you, like, wait six happens. months? Yeah, I don't know. Just fucking down a bottle of vodka and have at it? Well, I'd say you definitely get the, the surgery so you don't have any more kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to... You're going to have a lot of problems. Well, I mean, they didn't say this kid did or did not. If not, I mean, they're fortunate. Um, it's it's, it's not, also a very hard... Go ahead. Right. It's not in all likelihood that that the children of siblings right. are going to have any kind of problems. Like, that's that's not a common thing. Like, it, you can have kids with relatives. It's not like... It's a social thing. It's not like a biological thing. Yeah, I think I read somewhere where it's actually something weird, like less than a 3% chance yeah, the kid would have problems, and if it's cousins, it's like less than a tenth of a yeah. percent. Yeah. It's just a society thing, you know, that happens. But yeah, that would, uh, that'd be weird. Yeah. That would... Especially after that much time, I mean, man. And I think, do you move? I mean, do you just move away from everybody you know? So you don't have to deal with anything. I don't know. Or give it a shot, you know. See if yeah. anybody cares. But that's I don't know. But that's the thing. I mean, I guess you'd have to know your 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 group. Community. Like I don't know that. Uh, I was say I don't know that anyone in our group. I mean, we certainly yeah. wouldn't look down on anybody. Yeah. We would accept it. We might make jokes when they weren't around. Sure. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> we no, not we might. We would make yeah, that would happen. Some jokes, but in good spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah. We wouldn't have any ill will towards them. <laughs> it would just be for something to laugh a, about. Yeah, it's just that's how you deal with that situation. Exactly, and that and that's how we deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. We take the funny out of anything. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I'll make a joke about any bad situation. <laughs> might be in poor taste sometimes, but that's how I deal with stuff. Yeah. You know, it's just how it comes up. That's how you got to get through it. That's uh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's weird, man. I don't know. But I also think, and I mean, the chances of that ever happening are so so slim. Mm -hmm. But I think, let's say, I, if I knew I was adopted, I might want to get a DNA test with anyone I was going to marry. You don't well, want to be obsessed with it, like anyone I'm going to have sexual relations with. But it, I don't know. It depends. I mean, if you thought you were the only child. I mean, did, yeah, but how do you know? I mean, she, she was left on. She didn't know. I mean, she just assumed that she was the only child. Yeah, but I don't think you should assume that either. I think you would want to find out if you had siblings. Right? I mean, I know a lot of people who were adopted. They want to find out if they, you know, they might have long lost relatives out there. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Or that might just be something you never think of. Like, I'm stupid. I'm not going to kill myself yeah, over no, that. You know? Why would you? You know, yeah. I don't. I think if you grew up in, you know, a household and you were normal and happy. Right. You, did, you wouldn't think twice about... Like, even if I have one sibling, that's going to be the one person I find mm -hmm. and marry. But yeah, I mean, back in your own town again? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, your chances increase significantly. Yeah. If that happens. 
kind of luck I have. I said like, I can never win the lottery, but like <laughs> I would hit the percentage on that. Something you know? like that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the kid looks like both of them. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. a good mix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she looks like both of you. I can't. Look, yeah, and yeah, that's weird. That's crazy. It's like a chameleon. <laughs> All right, well, that'll do it for this ancestral episode of The Commute. Make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook. Check out our website, twocommute.com, T-W-O-commute.com. Follow us on Twitter, at Driver Passenger. Send us an email at thecommutepodcast at comcast.net. Hope to see you soon. This would be a Ferrari if my wife didn't own a horse. Because horses cost so much money to keep. And that's, it's funny.